I feel like I want to wear a hat. I think I say that in every video. So many items on my floor, you can't even see them. You know, it's a Spider-Man video, but I think I want to go with the Grogu hat. That's too tight. I feel like my intro has now just turned into me selecting a hat for every video, even though we all know I could just start the video with a hat on. Anyway. Hey, what up? My name is Miles, and in this video, I'm going to do my best to not do a good intro. Apparently, I froze on that one. Hey, what up, guys? My name is Miles, and in this video, I'm going to try my best to answer some of the most commonly asked or most frequently asked questions about Spider-Man suits and Spider-Man cosplay in general. Did I even test my mic? Is that on? That would suck. All right, it's on. I remember one time my mic died, and it was like 20 minutes of audio just gone. Yesterday, I put up a questions poll on my Instagram and in my community tab asking you guys what are the most frequently asked questions about Spider-Man suits, questions you had about Spider-Man suits, as well as just general questions most people tend to ask when ordering their first Spider-Man suit or even after ordering the first one, they still kind of have questions how to use them, what to do with them. Little questions that you wouldn't really consider but are very important to know. Anyway, I'm going to try my best to answer some of those to hopefully give clarity and help a couple people out with those questions. I have a multitude of other videos going in depth on a lot of these questions that I'm going to be plugging and linking for more like specific questions that need a little bit more talking about. So for this video, I'm just going to kind of gloss over everything, but I'll leave linked below all of the more like in-depth videos I have on specific questions. My goal for this is to kind of be like your one-stop video either before or after you get a suit to kind of help you out with a couple questions you might have. So anyway, let's go. Number one is a very popular one. Where can you get a good first suit? Now, there's kind of two ways you can go about doing this. It really depends on the quality of suit that you want to get. Now, you can have a first suit being your first physical Spider-Man suit that you wear, you can have that be a very high quality suit. You could do your research over time, look at a bunch of different cosplayers and save up enough money to get a good quality suit for your technically first suit. But I think that this question is more or less referring to what's a good starter suit if you're not sure if you want to get into cosplay. So I'll give you two answers. Number one of where to get an actually good quality suit, you can get them from a couple different places. I have a video link down below showing you everywhere you can go. But off the top of my head, RPC Studio, Hero Stime, Sim Cosplay, and my personal favorite print costume. All of them are great places to go to get your first suit. Very easy to use. But let's say you don't know. Let's say you're not sure you want to spend a bunch of money on a new Spider-Man suit and you just kind of want to test the waters and see what works for you. While I normally wouldn't recommend this for a good suit, it is a good place to kind of start to see if you enjoy wearing a Spider-Man suit and to kind of see what works. You can go on Amazon, get a cheap suit off of Amazon, see if it works. And if you like it, then invest in a new one. I know in a previous video, I said don't shop on Amazon for your Spider-Man suits, but I also clarified that's if you're looking for a more professional, more high quality suit. If you're just kind of looking and browsing around and you have 20 30 50 bucks to spend but you don't want to spend upwards of two three hundred bucks for a good suit just shop around on there get something that you might like to dabble around with and then you can start transitioning into a more high quality suit and go to those sites that i listed but again like a first suit can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people my first suit wasn't even a spider-man suit it was a spider-man compression shirt and like a whole custom suit that i built so it kind of just depends on who's ordering it and what your goal is for it but there's plenty of places you can look around how do you know the right fabrics to get on your spider-man suit well you don't really have to know and let me explain. Most Spider-Man print shops are not gonna give you a huge plethora list to pick from for fabrics. Most are pretty well set on Lycra fabric, which is a four-way stretch fabric spandex, which is pretty much unanimously decided as like the Spider-Man suit fabric right all of the suits i own are in four-way stretch lycra spandex and most print shops will offer that as an option now some print shops offer you the difference between like regular lycra and super ultra thick lycra the difference for that is simply just the thickness of the lycra if you want kind of like a thicker spider-man suit that will last you a lot longer and is a little bit heavier but has a lot more like preservable qualities to it and will last you a lot longer go for the super ultra thick lycra if you want one that's just kind of a little bit thinner you can move around a little bit more freely you can breathe a little bit but it doesn't have the same protection just get regular Lycra. But again, it's not like you're gonna be picking between a million different fabrics. You're gonna be kind of limited between those options because they're all fairly good options. Now, some sites I know like RPC Studio have a lot of different options with textures, fabrics, and different sort of layered effects that you can add on there. I personally have never used RPC Studio, so I, so I can't really give like my take or preferences on those sites or how to use it because I haven't used it myself. But for a general consensus of Spider-Man suits, the most of the time, I will say most, because I'm, I'm not an expert, I don't 100% know. Most of the time they are made 
made of four-way stretch spandex lycra. And most of the print shops just offer that automatically. Where do you get your suits from? I've talked about this a lot. I actually just made a video previously about three places to get suits from and three places not to. And on my page, I've talked about it pretty much every single video. The place that I personally go to to get my suits are print costume. But some other places that you can go to that I'm pretty sure are good are RPC Studio, Hero Stime, and Sim Cosplay. Now I'm sure that there's other print shops out there that I don't personally know of, but those are just the ones that I'm aware of and that I can say off the top of my head. One I always go with is print costume. It's just my personal site of choice but you have all the options you can feel free to explore based on like your budget, the options you want, and the suit that you want. I'll leave links to everything down below. How do you measure yourself correctly? That's a really good one. So if you don't know, Spider-Man suits are not one size fit all, and they're not under like a standard metric size chart. They don't just go small, medium, large. They do, but you shouldn't order like that. Spider-Man suits are custom fitted, they're custom sized. So every individual part of your body is measured differently that you then put into the website that they can print out to your exact sizes and sew it so it fits you exactly. Exactly. This is incredibly important and why I recommend you go to those print shops and not go to Amazon for like a professional suit because you want to have a suit that fits you perfectly. You want to have a suit that complements you and every part of your body rather than risking it not fitting in a certain area, risking like the frog arm effect, risking like when you go up and it looks like a onesie. You want to make sure that it's fitting in every area possible. So this is a big question and that's why I have an entire video dedicated to it. In this video, I break down step by step exactly how to order your first Spider-Man suit down to the exact measurement on every single part of your body, how to measure, where to measure, and how to enter it into the site, and giving you a couple tips and tricks on changing the numbers on certain parts. But the quick overview is just get a tape measure, pay attention to the website and where it's telling you to measure, wrap it around, hold it snug, and then add on maybe a fourth of an inch, and you're good. And I go over a bunch of the different variations and options that they offer. So I strongly do recommend you check out that video if you have any questions on ordering your first suit, and the fabric down to the measuring size. I try my best to cover it all, but I'm sure I missed something, which is why I'll make another video like that in the future, because hopefully I can help you more in that one. Can kids and teens get high quality suits? Absolutely they can. Again, this kind of follows the same idea of custom measurements. You want to make sure you're custom measuring your suit so that it fits your body type exactly, whether it's a different height, weight, size, whatever. It doesn't really matter who's ordering the suit as long as you get the measurements correctly. So don't take my word exactly for it because I've only ever ordered suits for myself, but I've ordered suits when I was different sizes. Two, three years ago when I started ordering suits, I was not the same size that I am now. I've grown since then, I've changed since then, but I've still used the exact same sites and I've measured the exact same way. The numbers were just different. So if you apply that to someone who's a little bit younger, you could probably get the same effect. Essentially what I'm saying is anybody can get a high quality suit. That's why they have custom measurements. So that they can fit any body type or age. Should you get attached versus detached gloves versus wrist zippers? So one of the options you can get on your Spider-Man suit has to do with the hands. So you can get a couple different options. You can get an attached glove where the entire suit goes all the way down to the fingertips and there's no opening, right? You can also get a second option where the entire suit goes up to the wrist and it stops and then you have a separate glove that slides over it. You can also get a third option where it goes down all the way to the fingertips but there is a wrist zipper here that you can slide your arm out of. You like that little snake move? So the question now bears down to which one do you get? I've had all three of these options. I have a suit that has detachable gloves, I have a suit with wrist zippers, and I have a suit with nothing, and it's just a straight straight shot one piece. At the end of the day, it comes down to personal preference. It comes down to what you want in your Spider-Man suit and what you think is gonna be the most comfortable. Now, I understand that people are kind of worried about these different options. When they say like detached gloves, they're worried that they won't line up or that they'll look too thick. On my Amazing Spider-Man 2 suit, I have detached gloves, so I have it where the glove pulls off and it cuts off at the wrist. I can honestly tell you, you really don't notice. When you put the glove on, you genuinely do not notice. If you spend like an extra two seconds lining it up for the pattern to match, you really don't notice, especially in photos, you're not gonna notice that much. Even if it isn't lined up, no one's gonna be pointing out the fact that your glove isn't lined up because you really can't tell unless you're looking for it. The second option of the wrist zipper, I have that on my Spider-Punk and two Miles Morales suits. Those are really helpful in the fact that you don't have to entirely take the glove off. You can just kind of slip your hand out. But the one detriment I have found with that is that those zippers are most susceptible to breaking and busting open. So my Miles Morales suit, the Into the Spider-Verse one, this one, the wrist zippers don't work. Like they are completely busted open and my entire wrist shows. The only reason I'm cool with that is because I wear the jacket over that suit, so it's fine. But I have noticed that those zippers are the most likely to bust open, and if you don't want that, 
you wouldn't get the wrist zipper option. The last option is just getting an entire connected suit where it's an attached glove. I don't personally recommend that option because you never know when you might need to use your hand. You never know when you might need to take your hand out of the suit. And the other two options aren't a super bad detriment for that. So if you really want like my personal ranking on how I do it, I'm most likely to get detached gloves because they've been the most helpful for me. Then I'd get the wrist zippers. Then if there's absolutely no option, I would get the attached gloves. But attached gloves are probably my least favorite because they offer the least amount of flexibility in terms of like using your hands. What do I do for shoes? Unless you're rocking these Into the Spider-Verse Miles Morales suit where you can wear the Chicago ones, you're probably not going to want to wear shoes over your Spider-Man suit or try to slip them in. Well, you don't have to worry about that. The print shops actually take care of that for you. There are two selections on most of the print shops that give you the option for shoes. You will get either Kung Fu shoes or attached soles. Kung Fu shoes are a slipped in thick sock at the bottom of the shoe that you can then slide your foot into and have a bit of a base to the bottom of your foot. Attached soles, on the other hand, are on the outside of the shoe like this, where it's a literal rubber gym shoe on the outside of the shoe, where it's like you're wearing a gym shoe. In one of my videos, I made a grave mistake of telling you you don't need to get both options, of telling you that you can just get the attached soles and they'll put in the Kung Fu shoes. They won't do that. That was a mistake on my part because I didn't properly know and I paid the price for that. So in my Amazing Spider-Man 2 suit, they have the sole on the outside, but on the inside, there is a Kung Fu shoe sock that my foot can then grip into and give me full control over this foot. On my Across the Spider-Verse Miles suit, you can see how thin this one is compared. That's because this is only the sole and there is no shoe on the inside. I made the grave mistake of not ordering the shoe on the inside. So the print shop you go to might give you different options. It might give you different variations, but I would personally recommend that if it gives you the options for both, get both. Get the attached sole at the bottom of the shoe and get the Kung Fu shoe on the inside. How do I wash the suit? Spider-Man suits get stinky, man. After a photo shoot, they get very, very stinky. And Lycra is not your friend. Lycra likes to hug that scent. It likes to hold on to how bad you smell. Trust me, it happens to everyone. At the end of like a six to eight hour shoot, if I'm in the city, it is not a great situation to be in, but it happens. So you don't want to just, when you get home, take your suit off, fold it and put it in a drawer. You're going to regret that. Trust me, when you open that drawer, you'll pass out. You want to wash the suit. Now, Luckily for you, I have an entire video dedicated to how to wash your Spider-Man suit. It's an incredibly simple process. Get a bucket of cold water, put a little detergent in it, drop the suit in, let it soak, knead it out, hang it up, rinse it out, then hang dry it, right? Because you don't want to be a stinky Spider-Man. Trust me, for the sake of everyone else and yourself, because you're stuck in that suit, it's going to smell. Don't be a stinky Spider-Man. This is a popular one and a very important one. Can you go commando in a suit? Well, technically you can. You can go commando in shorts, jeans, or a swimsuit, or sweats, whatever you want. But the real question is, should you? And no, you should not go commando in a Spider-Man suit. The reason for that is very, very simple. A Spider-Man suit is skin tight. Skin tight. Meaning that when it hugs your body, it's gonna hug everything that it can. I don't think I need to explain why that's an issue, but I'm sure everyone has seen examples online of why that may be an issue. Now, I understand that maybe not everyone knows what to wear under a Spider-Man suit, and I get that. That's why I have that video on what to wear under your Spider-Man suit. It is very important that you're covering up, that you're being considerate of others, because let's be honest, as good as you might look in a Spider-Man suit, nobody wants to see that. Trust me, you, you got to be considerate of other people when you're out and about, when you're on a photo shoot, when you're at a convention, when you're cosplaying, trick-or-treating, whatever you're doing. You got to be considerate of other people. Make sure that you're tucking in the old web shooter and making sure that you're looking, making sure you're looking spiffy, all right? No, you should not go commando, but what should you wear under it? Again, check out that video for some more details, but a quick kind of overview of that. You can use a dancer's belt or a series of compression pants and compression shorts to kind of cover up down there. You should at the very least be wearing underwear underneath. You shouldn't be going commando in a Spider-Man suit. That's just, that, that seems like common knowledge to be completely honest with you. Don't, don't do it. But I understand how it's a very common question. I get it. Which is why I have that video giving you options, breaking it down and showing you what you can do to kind of help with that area, because I totally get it. That applies to pretty much anybody wearing a Spider-Man suit, male, female, whatever you identify as. It applies to everybody. Just make sure that you are concealing the things that you need to conceal that you don't want to be shown through your Spider-Man suit. A face shell. What is a face shell and where do you get it? That's a good question. Now, I know there's at least one person out there who just asked the question, what the hell is a face shell? What is he talking about? In that case, this is for you, Brian. I don't know if his name is Brian, but if it is, I totally just scared someone named Brian. Anyway, what is a Spider-Man face shell? It's essentially this. You might be saying that's just a Spider-Man mask. Well, it's not really. This is a Spider-Man mask. But a face shell 
is under the mask. A face shell is a hard plastic or resin shell that you wear underneath your Spider-Man fabric mask, but over your face. And what it does is it gives you the shape and look of a Spider-Man face while also providing for the lenses to go on top of the mask. I have a bunch of different Spider-Man facials that I wear for different suits. I have a different one for Miles, a different one for Spider-Punk, a different one for Amazing Spider-Man, a different one for every suit that I wear. I know this is going to sound redundant because I'm just plugging my other videos, but if you want more details on a face shell, I have an entire guide on what a face shell is, where to get them, what they do, all that fun stuff. And again, I'll leave it linked down below. But your quick summary of that is a face shell, like I said, is a hard plastic shell that gives you the look of Spider-Man. Oftentimes they are 3D printed or resin printed. A lot of the print shops will offer a basic face shell, but it won't be character specific. If you want like a character specific shell, like Scarlet Spider, PS4 Spider-Man, Punk Spider-Man, Across the Spider-Verse Miles, if you want the exact like lens and face shape, you might have to go to like Etsy, Instagram, or Facebook. Facebook marketplace to find somebody who custom prints them and can size it to your face and ship it out to you. That's where it starts getting a lot more specific, ordering the shell for the exact character you need. These two suits, I wear different shells on them because they're different characters and they're different lens styles. I also got a couple of questions like, can you wear glasses under a Spider-Man mask or does a face shell help with a long nose? To answer those real quick, I don't think you can wear glasses under a Spider-Man mask. There's not a lot of room under here unless you had a mask that was a little bit thicker and out farther, but I don't necessarily think that you could or should because it really does compress on your face, even if it fits perfectly like this one does. It was custom fit to my face, even though it fits perfectly and I'm not uncomfortable, I would not be able to fit a pair of glasses under this mask. So if you do wear glasses out there, I, you'd either have to get contacts or just go blind for wearing a Spider-Man suit. I know neither are very fun options, but unfortunately with a Spider-Man suit, you're kind of limited in that aspect. Some people have talked about getting the lenses of a Spider-Man suit like this and replacing them with prescription lenses. I don't know how well that would work, but if that does work, I'd love to hear about it because I'd love to talk about it because that'd be a really cool game changer for that to happen. Um, I've personally not heard much about it though. And as far as a face shell helping with like your face shape or nose structure, like I said, it is a plastic shell that gives the, the look of Spider-Man. So whatever your personal face looks like isn't going to show through on the mask. You, the mask is going to look like the face shell. That's the whole point of wearing it. So if you're concerned about maybe having a longer nose, maybe having a bigger chin, something like that, cheekbones that poke out, the face shell on most occasions will mask all of that. I hope that answered that question. If it didn't, I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question, but I tried. And here's the big one. This is the one that everyone's been asking. How do you pee in a Spider-Man suit? Well, how do you pee in a Spider-Man suit? That's a difficult question. The short answer is you don't. You don't pee in a Spider-Man suit. You hold it or you have to strip the entire suit down to take it off. Now, the only counterpoint to this is some sites will offer a crotch zipper, a zipper right down at the crotch that will allow you to unzip and do your business. And they offer male and female crotch zippers, whatever one would suit you better. In my personal experience, I would not recommend getting a crotch zipper. I don't know how apparent they are, but if there's one place that you don't want a zipper to be apparent, it's it's probably there. However, on the bright side, I have gone on a bunch of Spider-Man shoots, sometimes up to probably six to eight hours in a suit, like in downtown taking photos. I've never had that problem. I've never had the problem of having to use the bathroom when in a Spider-Man suit. I can tell you that I've never personally had that problem, but that's just me. Somebody else could probably have that issue. Let's say you have the issue. Let's say you're in a Spider-Man suit, you're suited up, you're ready to go, and, and you gotta pee. What do you do? Well, it depends where you are. If you're going for a photo shoot and you're at the top of a parking garage, kind of tough luck. You're kind of screwed on that part. There's not many places you can go. If let's say you locate a bathroom and it's in public and you don't have the crotch zipper, you would probably have to strip the entire suit down. You'd probably have to take the entire zip off, whole suit down, and then it would be sitting around your waist. The good part about a Spider-Man suit is after a while, they're very easy to get on and off. I can get in and out of a Spider-Man suit fairly quick. So if that situation does arise, it's not the end of the world. Now. Let's say the forbidden truth happens. Let's say you can't hold it. You don't have a crotch zipper. You can't find a bathroom. And you just go in your Spider-Man suit. That's a tough day. That's rough. Um, I, I don't know. This is awkward. I've never been in that situation and I've never heard of anyone in that situation. But what I would recommend is you get out of that suit because you are going to chafe and you're going to be sore and it's not going to be fun. I would recommend you get out of that suit and you wash it as soon as possible. But the short answer of can you pee in a Spider-Man suit? No, no, you, you cannot. <laughs> it, it's rough. It really is like, and that goes for just about any cosplay. Like if I'm in my Stormtrooper cosplay, it's not happening. Like you have to commit to not having to go to the bathroom. And that's a problem you're going to run into with a lot of different cosplays is you're just not going to have bathroom access 
as much as you would want it. All right, those are all the big questions, but I do have a couple rapid fire questions I want to answer real fast. Are there any suits that offer web wings? Not to my current knowledge, but maybe in the future. There's probably some site out there. I would recommend looking up Spider-Man suit with web wings and looking at the reviews and if it's a trusted site. I personally don't know though. How do you help with body odor in the suit? Make sure you shower before, wear deodorant, and then just put the suit on. You should be pretty much good to go. Remember that Lycra likes to hold whatever scent it has. So eventually over time, like I said, after like a six to eight hour shoot, you're gonna start stinking. You're gonna be a stinky Spider-Man. That's okay though. Just make sure you're washing your suit consistently and your body itself is fairly clean. Use it versus the straight zip. I personally prefer having the use zip. I think it helps a lot more with the frog arm effect and it helps having a more compressed Spider-Man suit. I have the straight zip on some suits, but overall I prefer the use zip because it's very easy to put on by yourself. You don't need any help for it. And it makes the suit overall compress a lot nicer. And plus it doesn't cut through the Spider-Man symbol on the back. Any straight zip will cut right through that symbol. You have a use it but goes around and it's almost invisible do you need accessories i don't know what this one means by accessories if you mean like do you need a face show you don't need one but i would recommend one if you mean things like do you need web shooters do you need utility belts do you need hoodies again it depends on the spider-man suit you're going for if you're going for like a ben riley you're gonna need the hoodie utility belt the ankle belts you're gonna need those things if you're going for like a spider-man homecoming or infinity war suit you might want the web shooters you know i would say bottom line is you don't need those extra accessories unless they are vital to the suit ben riley spider-man that would be where it's vital to the suit the spider punk suit that's where all of the accessories would be vital ps4 suit do you really need to have the web shooters probably not it's up to personal preference and if you're able to get it. But if you mean like, do you need a face shell? Do you need wrist zippers? Do you need a U zipper? Do you need the shoes on the bottom? That comes with personal preference. That comes on if you want it in your suit and how you want the suit to look. What if you don't fit the body type for Spider-Man? Well, like I said, they offer custom sizing options for pretty much anything. So you can fit it to whatever body size that you are, whatever height that you are, however long your arms are, however wide your arms are, it doesn't really matter. Most sites will offer custom sizing to everyone so that you can size and fit the suit to you so the suit will fit you more comfortably there's not really like a one size fits all or a perfect spider-man body type for this they have custom sizing for a reason so that everyone can wear the suit everyone can wear the mask remember okay so i hope that those questions helped at least someone with clarification or ordering a spider-man suit or maybe just after you have a suit like different questions about it maybe you're worried you don't know the answers to some things hopefully those help like i said i have a lot of other videos on a lot of these things more detailed and explanation like what to wear under the suit how to wash it all of those things i have separate videos on in detail i will link them all down below i highly recommend you check all of those out because they will help you a lot more on whatever specific question you might have now i know you might be wondering what gives this guy the qualifications to answer our questions what gives this guy the cred what gives this guy the professionalism to be answering these questions? Absolutely nothing. That's the honest truth though. Like I'm not gonna pretend I'm better than anybody trying to answer these questions, but I will say that I have a decent amount of Spider-Man suits. I've been cosplaying Spider-Man for long enough where I feel as though I can offer some form of insight to answering these questions. But there's definitely gonna be somebody out there who knows more than me. There's definitely gonna be someone out there who can probably help better. Maybe they're in the comment section. If you do know the answers to some of these questions that you can help someone down below or someone asks the question, that I don't answer, definitely feel free to help them out. I'm not gonna try to gatekeep and say I know everything because I really don't. I'm just gonna try to help with the knowledge that I do know. But I do have a decent amount of experience with Spider-Man suits and in my book, experience outranks everything. Experience outranks everything. That sounded kind of rude. I just really wanted to use the Star Wars quote. Also, feel free to subscribe. We're almost at 30K, that'd be awesome. Make sure to check out the last couple videos where we repainted a Scream mask and a Jason mask for Halloween, of course, and turn on post notifications so that you never miss another community post or update for videos exactly like this. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. I'm out of breath. Peace and love, do good things, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, Peace.